Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Why AI. This week I'm joined by Paul Matthews from Tasmania, Australia. Paul provides some fantastic insight on the current state of AI in education and much, much more. I really enjoyed recording this one and I hope you enjoy listening. Hello, Paul. Nice to uh, nice to speak with you. How are you? Mate, i got to tell you, I'm living the dream. It's good to be on the podcast. Good to be with you and with your listeners. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, no, thank you for joining us. Um, how is the weather over where you are? Because it is not the light over here at the moment. <laughs> oh, really? Well, i got to tell you, we had an absolute perler of a day here. Just to throw a, a little grenade into your podcast already, mate, if if global warming keeps going, we down yeah. in Tasmania, Australia, we're not going to be too sad about it because we had a lovely little day. It's the middle of winter here. Right. So I'm in the southernmost part of Australia, and it's normally like you snap the top of your ears off cold. And really? we had a beautiful day. I was out in the, uh, I, I brought a lot of my classes. I'm a teacher. I brought a lot of my classes outside into the sun. And okay. I tell you, if this is the brave new world, Harry, I'm not so sad about it. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. We could do with a, a couple of warmer days here. To be fair, we've had a an appalling summer. It's not been good at uh, all. Everyone's, yeah, uh, everyone's quite frowny um, in Doncaster, where I'm based. <laughs> where, so whereabouts are you based in uh, in Australia? Tasmania. So say. I'm right. I'm right down the southern part of the southernmost state, which right, is okay. I don't know how much you know about America, mate. But I always describe it when I'm whenever I'm talking with one of the Yanks, I say it's like Texas. Tasmania is like Texas. If you're from <clears> Tasmania, right. you're basically you tell everyone you're from Tassie. You don't say Australia in the same right, way okay. that the Texans will say they're from Texas and not America. Right. So we're we're very proud of ourselves down here in Tasmania. It's a, sort of the most brutal, rugged, wild. Uh, place in Australia, there's about 47 things per square kilometre that'll kill you. And so, yeah, it's, it's really an acquired good. taste, but I, I absolutely love it. Yeah, fantastic. Living life on the edge every day. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah, there's uh, there's not so much more than a stray dog and a squirrel, I think, around here. <laughs> That's probably about it. Um, but yeah, brilliant. So uh, thanks, thanks for joining me again, uh, Paul. So, just to give the audience and listeners, you know, if they don't know um, who you are uh, particularly, you know, could you just give a little bit of a rundown of what you do, how you've you've come to do what you do, and and that sort of thing? Sure. So I spend my days as a high school teacher at Calvin Christian School in okay. the southern part of Tasmania. So I teach Year Nine and Ten history, and I got to tell you, mate, I absolutely love it. So I'm oh, a third wonderful. generation educator, third generation. So it really is the family trade for me. I uh, wow. I did a whole bunch of other things before becoming a teacher. I ran my own business here. Actually, I ran a couple of them. But really, I felt deep down that I was being called into education. So I've been okay. a teacher for the last five years, and I can't get enough of it. In fact, I had my whole plan laid out quite clearly in front of me, Harry, and then that brings me to the other hat that I'm wearing, which is, you know, <laughs> funnily enough, life has a way of throwing these things in your lap. Yeah. Uh, about four or five months ago, my best friend and I started developing an AI tool for teachers, allowing okay. teachers to leverage AI to help them with their uh, planning and preparation and curriculum alignment. So that's the other big hat that I'm wearing at the moment. I'm doing a lot of talking with our development team and mm. we're launching a pilot program in September. So I'm right in the thick of the education and AI and software as a service space. It's yeah. busy. I mean, I've also got two young boys. I've got a three-year-old, a one-and-a-half-year-old, and I've got another boy coming in about four weeks. Wow, so, congratulations. Look, I'm, look I, I'm grateful to God. Things are going well, but she's yeah. a full plate at the moment. Let me tell I... you that. Yeah, I imagine. I mean, the uh, the the, the uh, just from my experience of those uh, things you said, um, apart, uh, you know, I've got no experience in any of it except for the uh, the the AI sort of circuit, if you like, and that's busy enough. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I imagine it's a full day every day for you, you. You're right. You're right. But look, there's something beautiful, Harry, about your head hitting the pillow at night, and you mm -hmm. go, "Yep." day well spent you know Absolutely. if this is my yeah. last day if mm -hmm. something bad would happen i've yeah. spent this day in a way that fully aligns with my values and my mission in life and Perfect. so uh, it, it's busy it's tiring but i can't get enough of it that's brilliant yeah no it's it's a it's a very nice feeling feeling like you deserve your deserve your sleep deserve your meals that sort of thing you know when you eventually get around to having your lunch perhaps it's uh <laughs> yeah Good feeling. So, um, obviously, you've been uh, you, you've been in this sort of industry in the education uh, light for a, for a fair bit now. 
Um, was it something that you always wanted to do? Was it something from, you know, from an early age? Did you feel, did you see it and always think, oh yeah, no, I'm, I'm going to get to that? I did funnily enough. And mm -hmm. really, I guess for, for better or for worse, and in my case, certainly for better, you're always just shaped by what your dad does. And some people go, Very you know, true. they run a million miles away from what their dad does. Mm -hmm. And some people are running straight to it. And yeah. my dad was the big factor in my life. He's the person okay. who's impacted me more than the other influences combined, I'd say. And he, all during my formative years, he was a teacher. He still is a teacher. He's the executive principal of a big Christian school up on the sort of big island of Australia. Okay. And so, look, um, I think deep down, I always knew I was going to end up in education. I'm also mm -hmm. a very extroverted fellow, right? So one of my first business I ran was a window cleaning business and that okay. was lots of fun, but I was just cruising around with my headphones <laughs> in. And, yeah. You know, it was great for work-life balance. I worked when I want. Um, the second business was a disability support business. Okay. So I had wow. a, a really good time there uh, communicating and living with all sorts of different people. But in both of those jobs, mate, I wasn't able to have enough engagement with other people to really mm. scratch that itch that I have deep down as a big yes. time extrovert. So I'm in a school, I'm having 350 conversations a day and that gets my tank full. So right, okay. I, I, I think it is a job that I'm tailor-made for in a way. Brilliant. Yeah, absolutely. Do you feel like um, working um, in the, the sort of disability program, is that is that right? Is that what it was sort of? Yeah. Um, do, do you feel like that? also helped obviously i know all of your experiences will have shaped you into the place that you're at now do you feel like that in particular will have given you quite a lot of tools to working in education and working with with uh children massively massively yeah. and the same is true for window cleaning when i was window mm -hmm. cleaning i had to spend a lot of time doing basic low-level admin and wrapping my head around bureaucracy because i'm running a small right. business yeah absolutely. and when i'm with when i'm in disability support Look, not to put too fine a point on it, mate, and I hope your listeners have strong stomachs, but some days you're in there and your job, you're the first hour of your shift is changing the nappy on a 140 kilo bloke. And you're going, yeah. well, all right. So I'm coming from that environment. Yeah. Suddenly it's actually pretty hard for me to have a bad day in the classroom. Yes. All right. No okay. one's pooed their pants, you know, <laughs> everyone's kept their insides inside them. I'm feeling pretty good. Yeah. Okay. Some people were talking when they shouldn't have been and that's yeah. so but you know what? All things considered, I feel I still think I'm on a bit of a winner here. Okay, brilliant. No, that 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 makes perfect sense. Sort of makes you grateful for 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 it, really. Yeah, wonderful. So, um, how did you get to falling into AI? Then tell me about that. Look, I, I've always been a a big picture thinker, and mm -hmm. thankfully, I've got a best mate who is a very details oriented fellow. So okay. if we were to display the two of us as a Venn diagram, there's very little overlap. And I always say to people, if you're, if you're you know, looking for a best mate, if you're looking for a business partner, make sure you get someone who communicates differently and thinks differently to you. Because yeah. what they're going to do is they're going to supplement you and you're going to supplement them. And together Absolutely. you'll be able to do things that you wouldn't be able to do apart from one another. So we mm -hmm. actually got talking about this. He, in his typical granular detail focused uh, mindset. He was going, I want to build an AI for myself as a teacher. I want it to solve my problems. Ah. And in our discussion, we're out on my deck flip, flipping burgers. I said, mate, your problems are everyone's problems. You think your problems are unique? They're the same problems being felt by every single educator across the world. We, we mm -hmm. together being educators, we knew that the education system in some ways is in crisis, man. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know if you know the stats in the UK, but in Australia, if you're a general member of the adult population, you've got a one in 10 chance of burning out. If you're mm. a teacher, it's one in two. Yeah. There's been, uh, over here, there's been quite a lot of strikes, um, of late for, uh, you know, f for, f for all reasons, as you can imagine. Um, so I imagine and the picture is quite, quite similar, different in some ways, but probably quite similar holistically. Exactly. So he, with his small, granular, detailed, oriented way of understanding the world, and me, I guess, with my big picture, large framework way of understanding the world, well, it was the perfect concoction for us to say, let's do this. Let's actually do this. Uh, we're, we're both Christians. And so we said, hey, we want this. 
So we actually are going to do for other people what we want them to do for us. We're going to build them the very thing we would want to receive from them. Yeah. And so we, uh, we're, we're actually like four months deep. We're up to our eyeballs in talking with our development team. All this stuff you, that you would never think of doing as a teacher, we're now actually getting quite a rich education out of as sort of two teachers who exist in a pretty anti-competitive environment. Like yeah. it might be different in the UK, but as a teacher in Australia, I don't get paid more if I do well. I don't get paid mm -hmm. less if I do badly. And there's mm -hmm. nothing I can do to improve my salary one way or the other. Yeah. And all of a sudden we're cruising over into the business world where it couldn't be more different. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. I've got to tell you, it's, oh. been, it's been an education and an adventure. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, it's a bit of a wolf pit. The, uh, the the business world uh, in comparison, yeah. yeah I, th I think um, obviously the the, v the e they've both got their um, you know different sorts of uh, perhaps aggressive natures <laughs> in one way or yep. another, um, just in you know in different ways. Um, so are you enjoying it then overall so far? Are you yeah. enjoying yep. the? Yeah, I'm I'm loving it, and I think mm -hmm. I've always had a a competitive instinct within me, whether that's been through sport, I've worked a few jobs in sales. I really like that aspect. And to be honest, that's the one thing I find quite hard about teaching is there's no leaderboard. There's yes. no score being kept. And yeah. so actually when you move into business, you go, okay, I've got hard numbers. You know, mm -hmm. I've, I've, I know how big my mailing list is. I know how many people we have signed up for the pilot of our program. I yeah. know what other companies are doing and I know what we can do. All these sorts of things I think it it really is um, sort of pumping up my tires, making me excited, getting those competitive juices flowing. So I think yeah. between working in a school and building this software as a service, the AI for teachers, mm -hmm. uh, I think it's a really rich experience of life. Yeah, absolutely. Do you find the, um, obviously, one of the biggest things um, in regards to the AI and the AI sort of boom, if you like, over the last year, you know, 12 months has just been ridiculous, hasn't it? You know, with ChatGPT coming along and and, and Mid Journey and, you know, uh, uh, Bard and every, everything like that. Um, obviously, in regards to education, it comes down to the ethics side of things quite a lot um the mm -hmm. ethical the ethical side of things sorry um do you uh, do you do you feel like you're in a bit of better stead with that given that you're in education so you can actually sort of see both sides um you know I, I, have you run into any problems with it we haven't yet now for our own bespoke tool it's called my teacher aid by the way so a i d e is the way we spelled aid and that's sort of why we went with my teacher aid it's my teacher aid dot com <laughs> If any of your listeners from the UK would like to sign up to our pilot, we will be having a UK pilot later on this year where people will get full access to the um, full range of tools. Yeah. So they're more than welcome to apply for that, and that will all be free, the pilot. Fantastic. However, yeah, I really think there is something about actually being in the classroom that gives an added layer of context to this. I hear a lot of voices online, to be honest with you, and I know they're not in the classroom, and I know they're not dealing with this generation of students. And to be honest, man, if you're pulling in information from 10, 15 years ago, students are completely different. Ed tech is completely different. The whole profession is different. You're not operating on relevant data. So I no. think actually being in the education space myself, I teach full-time. I teach 1.0 full-time equivalent. So I'm, I'm yeah. a full-time teacher. I'm up to my eyeballs in lesson planning and engaging with students and pastoral care and building out uh, rich learning experiences. So I, I definitely think that gives me a perspective that a lot of people who are speaking into the AI and education space simply don't have. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Do you think it's something that in five to 10 years, it's going to be everywhere? Do you believe it's going to be in the classroom? Do you, do you think it's going to be sort of, you know, it, it completely integrated? I think it will be saturated. I think everything we do will be saturated with AI. Mm -hmm. I, I should say everything we do with technology. So the way I see this, Harry, is that we actually have to bifurcate. We have to split into um, our different learning experiences over the next couple of years as we adjust to the AI world. At the moment, what we can have is students can be on their laptops, on their devices all the time doing like low level admin tasks that aren't that cognitively engaging and actually quite cognitively fatiguing if you're staring at a screen all the time. Absolutely. What we're yeah. looking at doing with AI is ramping up the power that they're going to have access to. Mm -hmm. So what I, what I would propose, and when I talk to school principals and school leaders, I say this, 
all right, you don't want to you don't want to keep them off the tools. That's an error. The yeah. tools are a gift. They're a blessing, and we can use them well. However, let's make sure we know their place, all right? And there's a place for them, and there's a place for them not to be as well. So as we go over the next five, 10 years, AI will be infused within all our technology. What we need to do is we need to utilize it to the fullest possible extent, but then we also need times where we're stripping back and we're going pen, paper, and brain, mm -hmm. or Word document and blinking cursor, you know? Yeah. So I, I think we, we actually need to have uh, a, a well-rounded vision for what students do. So yes, let's integrate AI into their experience. However, let's also, um, the flip side, let's make sure we're building all the muscles, the old school thinking muscles that people yeah. have used for 2000 years. Let's not completely augment our experience of life. Yes, Let's make yeah. sure we can still get by with pen, pencil and paper as well. If it was to cease to exist tomorrow, you know, and you still need to have those, um, old fashioned skills. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, I, and look, I, I think we would actually be losing something if we always did all of our creative thinking with an AI engine spitting out results for us to curate. I Definitely. think it's great that we can curate things, but I, I think one of the things that makes us really unique as humanity is that generative impulse that actually creating things ourselves, and maybe we'll get on to later where exactly people should use ai in their workflow but mm -hmm. i really do think your brain is like a muscle if you don't use it well you will lose it and mm -hmm. if we rely if we outsource all our generative thinking i think there's something about uh, that which would actually uh, it would atrophy a part of us which is very distinctively and beautifully human and i'm certainly not eager to raise the next generation of young people without a generative capacity and yeah. having completely outsourced it yeah absolutely there's the you know i think the it's it's a very tricky time with the next generation in regards to the exposure that they're having to everything i mean i for for sort of when i towards the back end of my teenage years uh, you know social media really started to take a, a massive massive boom and that was that was i personally i've never really taken to it too much um i mean obviously i, I think it's got some beautiful uh you know aspects the way it connects everybody i think is fantastic but the the toxicity of it in a lot of ways um not to s speak too strongly um was always i i felt like i always kind of saw that in in some ways um whereas now it's just ramped up even more so i think there's there's definitely two sides to the coin isn't there that's right and i think what you've highlighted there with social media is also true of ai mm -hmm. uh, i believe my my philosophy of these things is that they are tools yeah. they're really powerful tools but the same hammer could be used to build a barn or a brothel Yes. Okay. okay. So we yeah. we keep looking at we keep looking at the hammer, saying, "Is this hammer good or bad?" Well, it's actually not about the hammer. It's who's using it and what yeah. am I using it for? And so I'm really excited to craft the next generation of young people who actually have character, not just competence, not mm -hmm. that they can just use the tools, but they have the character to use them wisely. Because yes, they could be abused in a whole bunch of ways. But I'm Absolutely. a big believer that technology, yes, it's like a tool. It's also like a mirror. So if we've got a whole lot of sort of moral deficiencies within us, that's yes. going to be reflected in the way that we are using technology. If we're hurt, we're going to use technology to hurt people. Okay. Absolutely. If we've been abused, we might use technology to abuse people. However, if we can focus on creating uh, people with integrity and character and discipline, they're going to be in the best possible position to leverage these tools well. Yeah, uh, for, for sure, which is uh, why we obviously there's – there seems to be quite a little bit of, you know, are we going to lose our jobs? Our teachers going to lose their jobs? That kind of thing where, uh, you know, you've just said it, that should, that, I feel like that, what you just said should put people's mind at ease in a sense of, because we still need mentors, still need people to teach those, you know, the, 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 give someone a moral compass, give a child a moral compass, because if, without that, those tools are going to become quite destructive in many ways. I mean, we've seen in, in some ways what, what they're doing at the moment. And there's, you know, a lot of, um, false information out there and obviously you need to have that you know that that primary socialization to yeah. <laughs> make sure that they're being used in the correct way um yeah look anyone who thinks that ai is going to replace teachers has got rocks in their head 
All right, I'm putting it on the record right now, Harry. Yeah. They've got rocks in their head. It's one of the stupidest things I've ever heard. As teachers, we need to understand this. AI is not here to take our job. AI is here to help us do a better job. Absolutely. Okay. AI Absolutely. is going to cut through the low-level admin that we are burdened with. I mean, let's be honest. Who got into teaching to get their inbox down to zero? Not me, <laughs> but I spent no. so much time doing that. Who got into teaching to do low-level admin tasks? Definitely not me, no. but that's what I spend so much time doing. And mm. so what do I think we can use AI for? Well, we can use it to streamline these low-level admin tasks that we have to do. And so we can spend more time doing things that only we can do, we create, being creative, uh, thinking, pondering, wondering, and reflecting on our practice. We can use it to uh, have the mental headspace to engage deeply and richly with our students. That's the sort of stuff AI is never going to be able to do. No. So far from far from AI in education making it a less human experience, mm -hmm. I am absolutely convinced, Harry, that AI in education will make it a far more human experience. That's yeah. So it's, it's a very, very nice way to put it. I I also agree. I think it's you know it, it's very true. You need to look at it from that standpoint, especially because I don't think it's. Ooh, one second, sorry about that. One minute. Oops, something just popped up on my screen. My apologies. Um, yeah, I uh, I, I you know, I, I don't feel like it's going anywhere. <laughs> so yeah. you know, you you it's probably best if people do start wrapping their heads around it and start looking at it in more in a positive light and how we can harness it and how we can you know use it for the better um if you just uh sort of obviously i like the podcast to be educational um to to perhaps teachers who know absolutely nothing about it or educators that know nothing about ai or very little or are just curious um obviously we don't have all the time in the world so in regards to ai and how teachers can use it what advice would you give paul look i'd say the very best thing you can do is just to roll up your sleeves and have a play Roll up your yeah. sleeves and have a play, all right? You want to be using chat GPT. You want to be using something like BARD. I mean, on a very basic level, teachers, uh, go type something in, get some output, and copy and paste it into a Google Doc or, or a Word Doc. And what you'll see is it sort of holds its formatting in a funny way. I think <laughs> you'll probably start recognizing that coming through your assignments and essays from your students. So if nothing else, it's really useful just to know what it looks like when it's cut and paste into a Word doc. But have a play. And mm. look, try try this, try this, right? So I use a very simple formula when I am engaging with ChatGPT or BARD. It's called the, the role task format formula. You may have heard of it before. First, you want to give the AI a role. So, And that will start with the phrase act as, right? Act as, and then you'll just put in your job, act as a year 10 history teacher. Uh, that's the role. Give it a task, okay? Create a rubric for an assignment, um, asking students to evaluate the usefulness of dropping the bomb on Hiroshima, mm -hmm. okay? And create the rubric using these things. Um, that's the task and the format. You tell the AI how to present it to you. So you say, present it in a table with five grids, uh, a grid with five squares, uh, five columns, and four rows beneath, that sort of thing. So if you can give AI a role, if you can give it a task, and if you can give it a format to give you the information, well, actually, that's going to get you 90% of the way there. So if you want to go from sort of zero to one in your understanding of AI, open it up, have a play with it, use the role task format way of structuring your prompts. And I think that'll actually get you a, a long way. Yeah, absolutely. I think ChatGPT is definitely a good place to start. You know, you can get it for free as well. The 3.5 version, I don't think you need to be, especially if you've not, you know, if you've got no real use for it, perhaps at the very moment, I don't think you probably need to start paying for it at the moment. Uh, but, you know, I think as it as it ramps up, I mean, it's uh, uh, how much have you, do you play with it quite, quite frequently? Have you had a good, you know, I imagine being in it yourself, Paul, is it is something you've had a good play with? <laughs> Yeah, I do muck around with it a bit. I think, yeah. as I spoke earlier about, we're building my teacher aid as well, which is a specific AI for teachers. Yeah. Now, the thing that I, because I ran quite a lot of professional development on how teachers can start using AI to benefit them in their practice. And what did I find over and over? I said, guys, you just got to give this a bit of time and a bit of headspace, mm -hmm. right? And the educators were coming back to me saying, Paul, the two things I don't have, 
are time and headspace right now. <laughs> and that's why we're actually building a bespoke version of this. My original plan was to go straight into consulting and professional development, but I thought that's not going to get the educators that we need to keep in the classroom, right? It's going to get okay. the people who have a passion for AI, fine. Yes. But who am I after? Well, let's be honest, the average age of a teacher in Tasmania, 49 years old. They're not digital natives. So okay. I actually need to bring the power of AI to that older generation who yes. aren't technologically as proficient as the younger generation. And so that's why with a bespoke tool, such as my teacher aid, with just a few simple clicks of a button and a dot point or two, they can actually get world-class results just because of the way that the AI is built. So I'd say, look, teachers, have a try, mm -hmm. but also look and see if there are tools out there. My teacher aid would certainly be one that would allow you to leverage AI without having to be an autodidact and teach yourself how to use yeah. uh, an interface with just a naked AI. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Paul, I really appreciate you coming on to the podcast. Um, I think it's, you know, it's been quite educational for me. I hope it's been educational for, um, for everybody listening as well. Um, do you have, you know, your sort of final, final words, if you like, <laughs> not to sound yeah, dramatic. Sure. sure. Yeah. Well, look, uh, let me give you a couple of things. First of all, um, follow me on LinkedIn, follow me on Twitter. I'm just Paul Matthews AI. That's Matthews with two T's. If we have teachers listening, I'd love for them to sign up to the pilot. You get, as I said, the pilot of my teacher aid, that's my teacheraid.com. You can sign up there. You get full access to the full range of features, absolutely free. And that would actually be a benefit to us because we don't know much about the scene in the UK and that will help us train our model in such a way that it's maximum benefit for UK educators. So, uh, yep, follow me, sign up to the pilot. And lastly, I would just say be optimistic, okay? Be optimistic. Yes, you will need to do some learning. If you're an educator, you'll need to do some learning over the next little while. But don't forget, that's actually what we expect students to do every time they walk into our classroom, okay? How often have we been talking with students and they say, oh, I can't do history, I can't do maths? And we say, well, sure you can. You just have to be a bit diligent. You just have mm -hmm. to apply yourself and risk failure in order to get the reward of new knowledge. Well, I just give that same hearty encouragement straight back to teachers. Yes, you're going to feel like a bit of a goose. No, you might not know what's going on, mm. but actually just roll your sleeves up, have a play, be willing to ask questions when you're not sure what's going on. How often do we tell students to do that? Be yeah. willing to ask <laughs> questions, be willing to ask for help. And I think teachers will actually find it quite an enriching and rewarding experience and it will get them out of a fear mindset, which unfortunately many are in. So that's my encouragement to educators and to, I guess, the general population as well. Be optimistic about what this can do, but understand that we we need to actually be wise about the way that we use these tools if we're going to leverage them for our benefit and for the benefit of those people around us. Brilliant. Well, Paul, thank you very much for coming on today. Really appreciate it. We'll do it. We'll do it again sometime. Please. I'd love to. Yeah. Wonderful. All right, Paul. Thank you very much.